Hello, my most amazing artists. I hope you are having an awesome day today. Welcome to the last week of our symmetrical beetles. Today, we are finally going to put our beetles and our background all together. We're gonna to add a few final touches and then we will be done. So to do this today, what you're gonna need is your beautiful symmetrical beetle. You're going to need your warm or your cool colored background. You'll need a pair of scissors. You're also going to need some glue. I like to use this little glue cup with just regular white washable glue in it and a glue brush. But if you don't have this, then you can use a glue stick or a glue bottle and you could even tape your stuff together. It really depends on what you have at home and what's available for you. I also have a Sharpie and last but certainly not least, I have a messy mat under my work so I don't get any mess on my table. So that's everything you're going to need to finish up your beautiful artwork today. So let's go ahead and get started. For the first step, we're gonna set our background off to the side because you don't need it just yet. The first step is we are going to cut out our symmetrical beetle. Now this beetle is pretty big so we need to go slow and that's okay if you don't cut right on the black line. Some of our beetles have very skinny legs and we can cut around those legs. You see how I'm leaving just a little bit of white space right where I'm cutting because I don't want to accidentally cut any part of my beetle off so we need to be very careful while we cut our beetle out today if you have any extra paper you can just snip it off and that can go in the trash can and like I said a second ago this is a very big piece of paper so it's a little bit harder to cut but what I'm doing is I'm just taking my scissors and my scissors are just opening and closing opening and closing and my lazy hand over here the one that's not holding my scissors I like to call him my lazy hand he is going to be showing my scissors where to cut. So my lazy hand is grabbing my paper and rotating it around to show my scissors where to cut. And you might have to play around with it for a little bit. The only thing that I don't wanna see is your scissors moving around your paper. That could be very dangerous because we never want our scissors to be facing towards our body. We always want our scissors, the blade of our scissors especially, to be facing away from ourselves. So that's what our lazy hand is there for, to show our scissors where to cut. And you can really see on that leg there, I left a little bit of white space just around it because I'm scared I might accidentally cut his leg off and I don't wanna do that. That would not be very nice. So really, really try your best. Take your time with your scissors, use your best scissor safety. And of course, leave a little bit of white space on any skinny areas that you have, especially around the legs and the antennas of your beetle. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut my beetle out and then I'll be right back to show you the next step. I just finished cutting out my beautiful symmetrical beetle and look at all this extra paper that I have. This can go in the recycling bin or the trash can or you could save it if you're at home for another project. But I'm just gonna set mine off to the side and now I am ready to bring over my beautiful warm colored background and I'm gonna position my beetle somewhere on my background. But you could play around and see if you like it your beetle on the background when it's horizontal, when it's going from side to side, and that looks pretty cool too. So, hmm, which one do I like better? Do I like it going up and down, or do I like it horizontally? I think I like it going horizontally, but you can have your background going vertical, um, or you could have it horizontal. I think I'm gonna choose horizontal for my beetle, and some of his legs are coming off, and. The bottom of his abdomen is falling off the background too and that's fine we're gonna have some of that because some of us have very big beetles and that is totally fine remember all beetles come in different shapes and sizes and colors and patterns so some of us have big beetles and some of us have smaller beetles and that is totally fine once you have positioned him how you like I also like mine to be right in the middle but maybe you want yours off to the side or diagonal there's lots of different ways you could glue him to your background I think I'll just keep him 
right in the middle of my background that's going horizontally and I'm happy with that so I'm gonna go ahead and glue them down so I'll flip them over take my glue cup and my glue brush and I'm gonna do little dots all the way around the edge some of his antennas and his legs and arms are a little bit skinny so I'll just do dots right in the middle of those skinny areas little dots all the way around the edge and this is a very big shape that we're gluing down so we got to go a little bit fast because if we go slow by the time we finish all the way back here up at the top then these um, glue dots might already be dry and we want to make sure they're still wet and sticky so that we glue them down that it doesn't come off so I'm going a little bit fast and of course if your glue starts drip dripping we know to drip drip wipe it on the lip of your glue cup not the lips on your face silly head this is not chapstick this is not lipstick do not put this glue on your lips but if it does drip we know that we can say to ourselves drip drip wipe it on the lip of our glue cup not the lips on your face okay drip drip wipe it on the lip of the glue cup and dot dot not a lot all the way around the edge uh oh i didn't do drip drip wipe it on the lip and look the glue drips on my background where i don't want it so i'm just going to carefully take my finger wipe it away and then we can wipe it on our messy mat okay if that happens to you just wipe it away with your finger and then wipe it on your messy mat but i do have glue dots going all the way around the edge of my beetle and i need to hurry because i don't want these first ones to dry so i'm gonna flip him over position him where i want him to go now some of his arms and his antennas are falling off and that is totally fine. I did put glue on the back of that, so I need to be careful because I don't want that to get glued to our messy mat. So I'm just gonna press down where the beetle is touching the background, and I'm gonna hold this down with my arms and my hands because this is a very big beetle, and I'm gonna count to 10. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And some of his legs are still wanting to come up, so if some parts are coming up, then you can just add a little bit more glue to help keep them down because we don't want any part of our beetle to be popping up. We want them to be flat onto our background. Once you think your beetle is nice and secured, then we are going to carefully flip them over. Wiggle it gently just a little bit. Don't wiggle it like crazy because then he will definitely fly away. So gently wiggle it and if nothing falls off, then we are good to go. So after you glue down your beetle and he's nice and secure, you've done a wiggle test and the wiggle test passed, he did not fall off, then we are ready to do the very last step and that requires a Sharpie. So we're gonna use a Sharpie to draw some more details in the background just to fill up the space a little bit and to add some more nature-y kind of things to our artwork. And we're gonna use lines and shapes to draw some leaves and some flowers Maybe you want to draw some little bugs in the background and you can do that. Um, but what I'm going to do is I need to be very careful because this is Sharpie. I cannot erase it. So I'm going to take my time and I am just going to start drawing some shapes of leaves and flowers. I will leave a picture on the video right now showing you some ideas for different lines and shapes that you can use in your background while you are drawing your beautiful leaves and your beautiful flowers. And I want these plants to be coming down to the bottom of my paper. So I'm gonna draw a stem coming all the way down off my paper. And I'll do the same for my flower. And this is kind of just a wavy, curvy line to show that this flower is, of course, growing from the ground. We are only drawing nature-y things, things that you would find outside. And of course, I'm taking my time because if I make a mistake, I cannot erase it. And that's okay because you know what we could do? We could just turn it into something new. Sometimes mistakes turn into a beautiful oops which means that it was a mistake, it was an accident, but it actually turned out beautiful. So you never know what could happen, especially when you're using something that you cannot erase. By the way, while I'm doing the background, I'm not coloring in any shapes because we don't want any big like black shapes filled in. We just want lines and shapes. Do not color them in because that might be a little bit too much for our background. Remember, the focus of our artwork is the beetle. We don't want to add too 
too many elements or too many um, images in the background that would take away from our gorgeous, gorgeous beetle. So just add a few things here and there, only using lines and shapes and not coloring any shapes in. So I'm gonna go ahead and finish up my beautiful naturey background using lines and shapes, and then I'll be right back to show you what my final artwork looks like. done adding all the details that I want to in the background I tried to use a good variety or a bunch of different flowers and plants and leaves I did add a couple little teeny tiny butterflies flying throughout my background so that's an idea for you that you could do as well and I tried to keep it balanced so if I drew a plant over on this side then I also drew it over on the other side to keep my artwork nice and balanced after you add all the naturey details that you want to to the background using lines and shapes, then you will be done with this amazing, beautiful artwork. I seriously cannot wait to see how your final symmetrical beetles turn out. I know they're going to be amazing because you guys are amazing. All right, I'll see you guys next time. Bye, guys.